North Carolina has always had a rich musical heritage, and we're proud to be a part of such a great treasure. Join Brooke and I as we talk to some of our favorite musicians, some good friends from our home state of North Carolina. Hear their story and see how bluegrass music has shaped their lives and their career. All right, welcome to another episode of the Carolina Sessions with Brooke and I <laughs> and our special guest today, Gina Britt. How are you, Miss Gina? Hey guys, doing good. Hope you are. Yeah, we are. We're excited to have you on today. Um, and we wanted to, you know, just get your input about being from North Carolina, being a musician, and uh, how it's impacted your life. So, Now, Gina, you grew up around Star, North Carolina. Is that right? I did. I was born in Pinehurst and then raised in Star. Around, uh, We know a lot of mutual friends and, and folks from that area have known y'all for a long time. It's, it's an uh, honor to be here with you today. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, we, I guess we met, I don't know, 20 some years ago, probably. Yep, it's been a long time. I bet so. And, uh, and Greg Corbett, our, our good mutual late buddy, told me a whole lot about y'all growing up. <laughs> 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 you banjo lessons from the same person, is that right? We did. Uh, we took uh, lessons from a guy named Charles Singleton, and he was from Star, North Carolina. And um, me and Greg would go over to his house, and he would kind of uh, play us some banjo music and put it on cassette tape back in the day. And we'd take it back home and practice it and then go back the next week. But yeah, um, for at least a year or a year and a half, we, we both took from the same guy. Mm hmm now, who was some other influences and people you picked with from around that area that really helped you probably you think um there were a lot of a lot of folks um harold crisco was was one and he did most of my setup work as well um but him and some of his friends from ashboro i would see them around at a lot of the fiddlers conventions um Alan Bobby's dad, um, James Bobby, which is not around that area, but I, when I when I said Fiddler's Convention, it made me think of, um, you know, Star Fiddler's Convention that's been going on forever. Uh, Northmore, which is where I actually went to high school, um, and then Seagrove. There was one about every weekend in the month of March. If you if you wanted to go anywhere, there was a lot of folks around there that uh, that really influenced me. Charles was, was one. He really took time um, with me and would, would sit down, didn't matter how long it took. Um, he would, he would show me what I wanted to learn. Yeah. I've heard uh, Greg Luck and Corbett and a lot of people talk about the, the setup work. You mentioned Harold a while ago. Uh, yeah. Just a, a wonderful man, wasn't he? He was. Um, you don't run across many people like this anymore, not in my experience anyway, but um, my dad would take uh, my instruments over there uh, for Harold to work on, and he'd work for hours getting it exactly how I wanted to get it, and my dad would ask him at the end of the, the day, he would say, well, how much do I owe you there, bud? And he said, ah, a couple dollars. <laughs> Aw, a couple dollars. <laughs> And of course, my dad always gave him more than what he what he asked for. But you know, it was just he loved it. He loved being around the musicians. And I think um, just growing up in that area, that's kind of what you found. Um, you know, it wasn't about uh, there was no agenda other than just having a good time and and looking out and encouraging other people. So I got a lot of that right. when I was did growing you, up. Did you ever hear the term a lot? since there's not a whole lot of girl banjo players, did you ever get that? Well, she's pretty good for a girl, you know, as you were learning to play and, and people really, <laughs> you know, taking, taking notice of how amazing you really are, you know, at such a young age too. Yeah. I, I mean, I, there was a little bit of that that I, that I heard back then. Um, I never hear that now. Um, I, not, not much. There's so many women musicians and singers in our genre now. Right. Um, back then i might have heard it a little bit more and, and i was always nervous to go up to the great pickers like at the fillers conventions and festivals and i wanted to play too you know and i was like are they gonna let me 
if I walk up there, are they going to let me play with them? And usually if I'd play a song, they'd let me, you know, hang around and play, you know, jam with them and stuff. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about other festivals and conventions or, you know, picking parlors that you got to, to be a part of around there or just in North Carolina? That was special to you. Yeah. yeah. In that area. Well, I know y'all, y'all probably heard of this and, and I don't even know if it's around anymore, but there was Eliezer. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it was just a little, um, I call it a little building where uh, they had music on the weekends and they would have uh, national bands come in sometimes and, and um, a lot of local bands to come in and, and have uh, music on the stage and, and it was like a family reunion, you know. Um, I remember that place and then um, of course, the fillers conventions I mentioned, uh, the Dole Austin and Quick Several Festival in Denton was kind of like my stomping grounds when I was growing up. You know, I, I became uh, aware of a lot of the bluegrass bands that I didn't even, I really wasn't aware of, I didn't know because um, until I got a little bit older, but I was introduced to, you know, Dole, the original Dole Austin and Quick Silver and, uh, just wonderful bands there and got a lot of opportunities um to meet people there so it's you know how bluegrass is everybody gets to meet you know me who they love to hear and sing and play i was we were all that same way too getting to meet our heroes you know yeah you had a a great group of friends to grow up and, and learn to pick with around that area too and you mentioned the fiddlers conventions that was just you know kind of a king pen area there I think in right in the middle of North Carolina, y'all was around everybody. Yeah, um, there was uh, me and Greg Corbett and Clay Jones and Wayne Benson, and uh, you wasn't too far from us. <laughs> we had a few. later than y'all. I wish I'd <laughs> been in the middle of you, but. Yeah, and then Alan Bobby and uh, just, you know, we all, we saw each other everywhere we went, kinda. Um, and it was it was Greg Luck, of course, and but it was it was so neat growing up being around all those guys. Yeah, I'm and they let me play with them. <laughs> your own That's girl. right. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about the all-female band that you uh, were first a part of, um, and that was Petticoat Junction. So, what yeah. age when that when that took place? That's an interesting uh, story. I was 18 years old. Uh, I met Andrea uh, Roberts, she was Campbell at the time, at, um, I don't remember if I for sure met her at Myrtle Beach at the Bluegrass Festival, um, but I know that we uh, got in touch and and so, we decided we thought it was so cool you know we we're both girls playing music in in the bluegrass industry and stuff so um when i graduated high school everybody all of my other friends from high school went to the beach for graduation i left on graduation day and moved to nashville tennessee and started playing with the petticoat junction um at the time i didn't even know how to play bass upright bass so andrea taught me how to play upright bass um so i could join petticoat junction <laughs> i was telling yeah. you that earlier today and i know we've jammed in the past and you played bass and sang yeah. occasions and i was naming a couple of the members in the band and i said well gina played bass in that band <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was me and andrea roberts and uh gail Ruta Seals, she's Gail Johnson now, yeah. and Robin Roller. Robin Roller okay. played banjo. Yeah. Played banjo, yeah. So it was fun, yeah. We traveled. We traveled in a little minivan all over the country. <laughs> Great memories, though, right? I mean, yeah, for anything. So no, yeah. the Moon Creek Girls was they before y'all formed, or just right after that? They were kind of in line with us, and. A, a little tidbit that a lot of people may not know. There was a time period after Dale Ann Bradley left the Coon Creek Girls that I went and played guitar with the Coon Creek Girls for a very short time, very short time. Um, but that's not, I kind of forget about that sometimes, but yeah. 
that's that's something I know people enjoy knowing. So that's, yeah, that's absolutely. A neat piece of information. I'm not a great guitar player, but it worked. <laughs> And that was, I guess, one of the first all-female bluegrass bands, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it like, was. family, I know, had the sisters and stuff, you know, that sang, and a lot of different bands had females, but that was probably the first all-female band. Yeah, I think so. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love going back and listening to a lot of that stuff, too, that you guys did, and it's, it's, Thank it's, you. it's timeless, so. Thank you. How long did that band, uh, did you work with them? I was with, um, so I graduated high school in 1990, and I played with uh, Petticoat Junction till 92, 93, somewhere around in there. So just two years, two and a half years. Yep. And then you come back to North Carolina and started New Vintage? I did. I came back and uh, started with New Vintage, and uh and then uh, I think that was the end of 92. And then I, um, I played with New Vintage for a while. We did the Pizza Hut showdown and, and spit one spigma and went through that and uh, some contests and things. And then I took a hiatus from, uh, from New Vintage and I went to Japan. I was there, I played over there in a, uh, a special configuration it was it was a really cool configuration at, at, at a re resort called Fisherman's Wharf and um, so I was there was supposed to be there for six months ended up being there for four months um, but it was I was playing bass and um, Jeff Autry was playing guitar Scott Vesta was playing banjo um, and Laura Weber uh, Cash was playing fiddle. Uh, Dave Peters, I don't know if you remember the late Dave Peters from Houston, Texas, he was playing mandolin. It was a great band. We, uh, we would walk around uh, this resort called the Fish. It was a beautiful spot too. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And um, we would walk around this resort um, at the, sometimes we would, uh, stroll through the restaurants just playing music <laughs> um, but we played three to four times a day kind of like they do at the at the um, theme parks now they'll have you know little shows but we do three or four days shows a day yep so I did that for four months I was supposed to be there six my dad got um, sick during that time so I ended up coming home early yeah well, that was a great experience yeah. Yeah. Did you start back with New Vintage later on, or? I did. They let me go right back. <laughs> That's awesome. You can't beat him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I went back, and we ended up recording a couple records with New Vintage there, and um, those those were so fun uh, to record. That configuration and New Vintage. Um, that was me on banjo, Russell Johnson on mandolin, Earl Llewellyn on guitar, um, Carl Caldwell was playing bass, and Jan Johansson on fiddle. That's right, yeah, that's great. Yeah, Zach McLam was actually the first bass player with that band, um, and he couldn't even drive yet. He was 15, his dad would, would bring him to the gigs or we'd go pick him up or whatever we needed to do. So I've been, I've been playing in bands with Zach before he could drive. <laughs> <laughs> this south of raleigh down there is that right yeah 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 right. not too far from where i live now that's that's not too bad yeah where are you at now i am in clinton north carolina and it's i'm about um halfway in between fort bragg and wilmington okay yeah so i'm way down here yeah you're all over there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah now, how many years did you spend with Lou in Carolina? I, I think that was about the first time I met you. I might have been 95. Yeah, I went with Lou in 94. Um, and I started with him on bass. And uh, so I played there for a couple years. And then when they some band changes went on, then I switched and Terry left. Because it was, at first, it was me on bass and Terry Balkum on banjo and Lou 
and um, I want to say it was Mark Keller first. Mark Keller that used to be with um, Southern Connection, if, if any of your listeners will remember that band. Great, great band. Um, and then Richard Bennett played guitar with us for a while. Um, and then we did some uh, switcheroos and Alan Bobby came in the band. So then it was me, Alan Bobby, Lou and Randy Barnes. And we did um, a record with that band. That was an awesome record. It was probably one of the most favorite records I've ever recorded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you about that. Aubrey played fiddle, I believe. and Yes. Him and, and Alan Bobby and you just trading off on all the solos. And, of course, Lou was in there, and it was just. Uh, yeah. It was, it, was, it was good. I'm sorry? Did you record the record? We did it at uh, the old Doobie Shea Studios before it burned down. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Tim. Great. Had a great studio. It had a really good ear for mixing and just, you know, capturing the moment, too, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we had, there was a lot of uh, neat things. There was a song that um, that I did in there that Ronnie Bowman uh, wrote called Feeling Like I Do. I don't know if you remember that song on that record, um, but Ronnie came in and, and sang with us on that cut. So there was a lot of neat little things on, on the record. Um, and the material was just great. One of, it was probably one of my favorite records I've ever been on. Yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, Ronnie lived near the studio up there at that time. I was recording with Charlie, I think the first record we did with the Country Gentleman, and Ronnie came over and hang out. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, great time for you there. Well, I think we met at First Class Bluegrass when you was up there with Lou and the band playing. That yeah. Was a great time. Yeah. We listen to them a lot, don't we? We do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you do after uh, you left Lou's band? I was with Lou for six years and. Um, then I decided I was just going to uh, freelance for a while. And that's, that's what I did. I played with several different bands. I played with um, uh, Sally Jones and the Sidewinders with Dale Ann Bradley. I did my own band for, for quite a while, uh, which was me and Ashby Frank and uh, Beth Lawrence and several different guitar players through that time, but I had Keith Chu on guitar, which is a, a, was a member of the Farm Hands, um, and which is very ironic, his last name, because I ended up having that last name when I got married later. Um, and then Clay Jones played in, in that band for a while. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Katie Penn played fiddle with us for a while. I you had a couple festivals that we was doing together with your band there. One of them was close to Shelby over here. Close yeah. To, yeah. My mom always loved seeing you and talking to you because you was a clogger. Also. Yeah. <laughs> I love seeing your mom too. Always very sweet. Very sweet. And she's proud of, of her son. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you started up uh, next in your career. What was, what was your next band? Um, so I did all the freelancing and, um, and then I guess, uh, it was Alan, Bobby and Grasstown. I went, I went with Alan for, for a long time, you know, mm -hmm. doing different things. And then that's right. Yeah. So I went back full circle, kind of, I'd played with Alan for, for quite a long time in Lou's band. And then, uh, I was fortunate enough to get to go back and play with him again. Um, and also during that time, I had this special project of Sister Sadie coming in. So my schedule started kind of getting uh, a little bit overwhelming, trying to juggle, juggle both at the time. And um, so I, I had to choose. <laughs> so you have sometimes you have to put your big girl pants on and, and you know, do what you have to do. And I ended up uh, choosing Sister Sadie at the time. Um, and Alan was playing quite, quite a bit at the time. And, uh, I have two daughters and, um, so it, fit, it just fit me a little bit better for the time, you know? 
Well, how's that been being a mom and being on the road? Uh, I've, it's, you know, it's, um, there's a balance. There's a life balance. You have to make sure you, um, you adhere to and, and keep your character, what you want it to be and be a good role model and example for your children. You want them to see you, uh, pursue your dreams and let them know that, you know, it's, it's possible to do whatever you want to do and, and still do the right things. And I hope that's what I've, I've done. I've, I've tried to be as good a mom as I can. Um, and I would, through their uh, earlier years when uh, they're 13 and 16 now, uh, when they were younger, I would, I would do my best to try to choose um, the gigs that I would accept and the ones that I wouldn't, depending on what they had going on and make sure I was there for anything that was important that I needed to be there for. And, um, and then now they love they love you guys so much <laughs> and you know they love they love Brooks singing too and um but they love going to the festivals and and being there and, and meeting people just like I did when I was their age so it's it's neat to see yeah it's kind of the best of both worlds isn't it getting to be a mom yeah. what you love too and, and introducing them to the to what you love so yeah it is I've seen them sing at IBMA and the kids on bluegrass stuff so mm -hmm. they, yeah they definitely have it in their blood, just like mine. Oh, yeah. They, uh, yeah, they love to sing and uh, haven't really picked up on uh, instruments seriously yet, but uh, if, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine with me. That'll be their choice. Yeah. <laughs> I've often told Brooke in the past, to get off subject just a little bit and go backwards. You had a couple recordings you did on your own. Like at a young age, I've got, I think I sent you a picture of it last year. <laughs> Maybe an album when it was you. Uh, I forget how old you was. But uh, the other one I remember is when you recorded Old Flames. Yes. And uh, I've told Brooke, that's come on a bunch of times. And I said, you know, Dolly's a favorite and always sung that better than anybody. But, uh, of course, you know, it's, it's her tune. But Gina Britt can sing it as good as anybody on the planet. Thank you. That's so sweet. It's like, I need to leave Gina's tune alone. <laughs> <Just not serious. laughs> yeah, there's, you know, you get used to hearing certain people sing songs and, and you don't want it to, you know, don't want it to get messed up. Um, but I, yeah, I did. So I did a, a record. They were not CDs. They were not cassette tapes. And they were, not, they were records. <laughs> <laughs> like you know the big records so I did one when I was 10 and one when I was 12 and one when I was 14 and I re my parents took me up to uh, this recording studio in North Wilkesboro North Carolina and um David Johnson do you know David oh, yeah, yeah very well David played every instrument on the whole entire record except banjo on those three records um so but i have those and every once in a while i'll get somebody to send me a, co a cover and i was like oh my gosh where did you find that <laughs> um and then i did one when i was um 17 18 and um and then i did a, i did one just a few years ago with the old flames and that record had a lot of my my childhood um friends on it had Greg Luck and Wayne Benson and and Jimmy Van Cleve uh, Jim was also all, always around at the, the festivals and stuff and and playing with us and and Clay and Zach so it was, it was really fun to get to record that album with them hard to beat that bunch of musicians there now it is it is and where you go it don't get much better than that <laughs> yeah it's you know you have a special uh camaraderie and friendship and you know appreciation and admiration for the people that you know you kind of grow up and learn from and yeah. so it's neat. That's, that's a good thing about being from North Carolina uh, is meeting all those folks having so many good pickers around and good friends and I'm thankful that all y'all let me in that circle when I met y'all. Oh, well, you deserve to be there. <laughs> You're just as good as, uh, as anyone else coming in. So it was, you know, it's, 
it's such a, it was rewarding to see you guys where you are today and what you've accomplished. And, and I know, uh, with you meeting Brooke and, and y'all going where you are and where she's, she's gone on to, it's just really it's special to see. Well, thank Thanks you so much. much. Yeah. Well, tell us about playing with the, with sister Sadie, all those gals and you guys are just, you, you really, you know, you have it going like you're just yeah. you're connected and it sounds great and people love you guys what you're doing and um, we do you know and we're, like you said we're so proud to see you guys you know doing what you're doing and uh, coming up in the business it's just it's awesome to see all your your success too. So. And how exciting to get Grammy nominated yeah. for that record. <laughs> it was very um, surreal that's that's the only word i can think of to say that it was surreal to to get to experience it and go to la and to the grammys and all that it was very very nice but yeah it's it's fun we uh you know you have a musical uh when you have a musical connection with, with certain people you just know it you know and that's kind of how it has been with the girls musically and and um so yeah that's really fun <laughs> love what y'all are doing we yeah. love the sound we followed followed you on facebook and everything when y'all was out there at the grammys and watching all the pictures and stuff and yeah yeah tina's videos crack us up oh, too yeah. she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can remind everybody who's in who's a part of sister sadie yes yeah, so there's uh dale ann bradley on guitar uh tina adair on mandolin deanie richardson on fiddle um, and Hazy Siako is uh, playing bass with us. That's cool. I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What would you, uh, I know we got a little bit more time to go here. Kind of say about the Carolina sound and being from North Carolina and, and what it's offered to bluegrass over the last, you know, decades. Well, uh, of course, you have so many great banjo players that come from, from North Carolina. Um, but I've told so many people this throughout my career, and like I would go to different parts of the country. There's a cohesive and, and a very unique sound to Carolina-style bluegrass, I think. Um, and I, it's very um, easy for me to pick out. Um, so that's... I've told people all over the country that you can you can tell people who's from Carolina how they play. Um, they mean business. <laughs> you know, they mean business when they play. Um, so I think it's, um, I would say that, that it's, it's just, it's unique um, and it's easy to, easy to pick out. And that's what you want to be. You don't want to be a cookie cutter, um, you know, sound. And I think a, a lot of people, um, will draw from like me in particular, like my banjo playing. Um, there's so many ban great banjo players that I like to draw from, but I like to also create um, my own thing. So, so you know, maybe somebody will hear something that I've done and and say, "Oh yeah, that's that's that girl from North Carolina." <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah when it's Tina Britt on there playing the banjo and I don't, I don't know if it's because I just know you so well and I got to listen to you so much on those records especially the Carolina record that she was a part of but uh, I think what made us all better is just like we talked about earlier is being around a lot of good festivals with so many people that was very good and you had to up your game to to fit yeah. in or, yeah you know, you're seeing at Denton all the professional players and firsthand right there sitting on the first row listening to your favorite break or something, and then you can go to the parking lot and maybe learn it from them or have somebody right. look it, you know. Definitely. I think that's a huge uh, thing about North Carolina um, is is being able to experience that and be around uh, all the great bands, the North Carolina bands even, right. not even just, you know, um, the there's been a lot of great bands come from North Carolina. Yeah. Or if not, they have been somebody from North Carolina in those other bands that, yes. you know, just like Earl, uh, I think. And when the folks yeah. who about this, he really had the style and, you know, 
helped create the bluegrass sound and with just his banjo playing the role constantly in there driving driving yeah. force we all got here in North Carolina yeah that's a big thing is the driving driving force I think and you know we we do that a lot sometimes yeah. to a fault <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's been a good time here talking with you. You've been uh, an excellent friend down through the years, and we thank you so much. And go check out Gina Britt. She has a brand new record that come out this past year. It came out, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we look to be on some IBMA nominations mm -hmm. this year in 2020. Mm -hmm. We voted for you anyway, girl. Thank you. I voted for y'all too. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it, it's been a uh, the record being out has been been great and it's had some uh i've appreciated all the recognition it's gotten and thank you for coming to sing with me on it brooke um we uh we weren't actually able to be together when we did it but it it turned out great and um i've i've heard a lot of people bragging on the uh, our the timber of our voices the three of our voices singing together on on and on so mm -hmm. that's it's such an honor. Well, thank you. Same for me. I, I appreciate you asking, and yes, definitely an honor. So, yeah. <laughs> and thank you for being with us today on the Carolina Sessions. So, uh, we've been looking forward to talking to you, and um, you didn't let us down. So, That's right. <laughs> good. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, I appreciate everything you guys do for our music. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah. The Bluegrass World's lucky to have you. Absolutely. <laughs> As they are you. <laughs> All right, you have a good evening. Bye. All right, thank you. Bye.